Today I wanted to have a little bit more of a relaxed, straightforward conversation with the audience. Actually similar to a conversation I had about a year and a half ago around the state of our industry, around the consequences and effects, the, the long-term sort of delineating price that's going to be paid because of things like COVID, manufacturing shutting down, and the shipping crisis that's currently happening in the world. Now, it's been about 24 hours at the time of recording this video since a company of mine, Eldorado Games, published a 12-minute video on their page and to their community saying, well, a few things. First and foremost, because they've been overwhelmingly responsible with the funds they've earned through Kickstarter, always setting money directly aside until the project's complete, they announced that every game they have will deliver, which is important to me and important to backers and important to people who've supported these indie creators because, man, I, I want my games and we all invested money in them. And so that was one category. But then the secondary category was that literally a day before they filmed that video, they got hit with another surprise $150,000 bill for shipping. A cost that in the board game industry, especially as a small publishing company, a first time publisher, or even just an indie kind of designer publisher, you really can't swallow that type of price. And so they posted this video, having a conversation, sharing the numbers. I'll leave a link down below, letting people know if you want to support them, what you can do, but ultimately just trying to communicate the facts, the data, the numbers, and they break it down, talking about that taxes, adding an extra 50 grand, shipping going from two to 3,000 per container, uh, all the way up to like 20,000 per container, meaning that the price went up by an insane amount to get their games actually here to the States. They talk about the fact that even though they earned about a million dollars in crowdfunding, after taxes, after expenses, uh, when it came to paying the crowdfunding, paying the production, creating the molds, upgrading some of the components, uh, and just getting them logistically from China to the States, to the backers, they made a total profit of about $80,000, which sounds good, except they spent two years working on that profit and didn't know that profit until the very end of the campaign and still could be hit with more fees, more taxes, more issues regarding shipping that they just can't entirely control and anticipate. And again, the very first thing they did and the thing that I've known from the very beginning working with Eldorado Games is that they're a company that has always treated their backers' money as their backers' money until the games arrived. So they're one of the good ones. They're one of the companies that have been aggressive at being responsible, who've set aside every single piece of funds, expecting to pay themselves at the end of a project. And now, two years into working on some of these games, the two people that run the company have found that they've made a profit of $20,000 a year, which is unsustainable. It's unsustainable for a single bachelor living in Missouri, let alone a family with a wife and kids who are doing board games as a full-time career. And you might be sitting there saying, well, don't do board games as a full-time career. And I hear you, but that's part of the conversation I wanna have. That's, that's part of the struggle that I have with this industry and part of the concern I have with the industry going forward. Because here's the reality. They've delivered successfully and will have delivered something like six or seven games. Anyone looking at them from an outward approach would say that this is an established, founded publisher. Small, indie, two people, two best friends working on some incredible titles. But still, this is a, it's a publisher that's made it, a publisher that succeeded. And then we start looking at people who are diving into Kickstarter now, who are on their second or third game, who are scraping by with $20,000 earned, or even games that just made a million dollars on Kickstarter, but it's their first swing. This is a hard time to be in this industry. And I don't know, and I don't see it necessarily getting better. And that's the weird part. And so I'm trying to have this conversation with my community to challenge you all to do a few things. Be gracious with your time, your energy, 
your resources, but be gracious with your charity. Like these publishers and our backers and our communities are all going to have to have some degree of understanding. Companies are going to be asking for help. Companies are going to be asking you to cover more shipping costs. They're going to ask you to literally save them. Eldorado Games isn't. Both Nick and uh, both both Nick and his partner are going to be uh, Daniel, I believe. I don't know why I'm Daniel Arison. I was going for Aaron and Daniel. That's not the point of this video. Both both guys over at Eldorado Games are taking full time jobs. And they're working on Eldorado Games and finishing up the project as a passion project. And then asking the question if there's actually money to be made and a career to be had in this industry. And that's a company that earned over a million dollars collectively on Kickstarter. That's a company that's done great, right? And so other companies who've already had backers, who will have backers, who haven't seen the shipping costs yet, who haven't quite accounted for the data and the logistics and just the numbers that go into this type of thing, they're going to be financing games. They're going to be mortgaging their house. They're going to be asking you to help. And they're going to be asking you to help at the cost of $2 or $5 or $16, depending on how big the game is, when it ships, and where you live. And I get that that's frustrating. And I get that when that adds up with three or four, or ten companies, it's a lot of money. And it's money that maybe you don't have either. But if we want to see some of these companies survive and do well and bridge this gap, we're going to have to understand the context of this larger conversation. You see, the board game industry, and something that I didn't know before I was a content creator, is not an industry that is flush with cash. There's not a lot of people running away or becoming multi-millionaires in this space. And almost everyone in this designer hobby space has a few principles that are unequivocally true. On your first Kickstarter, you do not make money. And yes, you can find a few points of reference where you could argue against me or say I'm wrong or question my logic. But trust me, I've worked with enough, co enough companies, heard enough stories, tested enough prototypes, watched enough campaigns succeed and fail, watched enough campaigns skyrocket to the top. And what I can affirm to you is that even publishers who are at the top of their game are not necessarily making money on Kickstarter. The industry doesn't have the margins. What you can charge for a game to the public, that percent that you're able to take for yourself, and the amount of time, dedication, resources that you have to spend now to get a game up and running. I'm talking Kickstarter fees, backer fees, credit card fees, shipping, manufacturing, creating the molds, giving away free things to talk people into backing their project, trying to compete with numbers that go out to retail, things that just are accessible already. The cost of advertising, media, marketing, quality artwork, great graphic design, a good rule book, all of that chips away at what the designer and the publisher actually make. And so, when it comes down to the brass tacks of it, I don't care how successful you are on Kickstarter, the odds of you making money on your first printing are little to none. And if you do it, you either have an incredible margin or you got incredibly lucky at running your numbers and letting the audience know the truth behind where your prices are. Because one of two things has to exist. You either have to be selling a game above current market value, what people assume a game is worth, or, or I don't know. And that's true. I, I don't have a good answer. And along with that, the, the other element that we have to consider and, and look at is the fact that for the most part, Publishers don't make money until the second reprinting or until games hit retail. Until they can sell a bulk order and make a decent amount of profit. Or the second reprinting, once some of the, once some of the biggest fees are already covered, things in the vein of molds and other things, they, they have to either diversify their style of income, charge an astronomical amount, or make it through to kind of the next pocket of printing. And, and luckily, some of them may be able to do that. And other ones have established the business model in a way that is, well, sustainable, that is beneficial. But every single publisher I've talked to in front and behind the scenes 
has been reeling with the current shipping crisis. And El Dorado Games is the catalyst for this conversation because they're people that I care about and they're people that have decided to be public with their story. But our industry is not currently okay. Your favorite publishers, I promise you, are probably on the edge of their seats wondering what the next project's going to bring in and if it can buy them enough time to survive the current global crisis, asking where their margin's going to be coming from or what they're going to finance in order to just make ends meet for the time being. Most are probably looking at other ways to diversify their income and quite a few are probably having a real conversation with themselves, their families, and figuring out how to have a conversation with their backers about shutting down. And I bet, I bet most, if not all of them will deliver. Our industry is full of people who are willing to go into tens of thousands of dollars of debt, and at times even hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt to make sure that you get the product that you supported. They're not out there making money, stealing profit, or pocketing any number. And so when they ask you for extra shipping, it's not because they're putting your $6 into their pocket. It's because they put themselves in debt in order to get you your product. And so please be gracious. Please keep that in mind. The state of our industry is, as far as I can read, good and growing, but fractured. I, I don't know if you followed along with the shipping crisis over the last two years since COVID has done rolling blackouts, but if you haven't looked up the pictures of boats currently backed up in Shanghai, a major manufacturing zone that's shut down currently from COVID. If you haven't looked up at the coast of California, where crates have been sitting outside the dock for months, the backup, the traffic jam when it comes to the infrastructure of our civilizations, it's amazing. And it's something our world has never seen or experienced before. And it's skyrocketed prices, containers, like I said at the beginning of this video, that used to go for two, three thousand dollars are now selling for twenty, thirty thousand dollars. And that doesn't mean you'll get your product here on time. That, that means you'll be paying that price to kind of get it whenever you want. You can pay extra for air freight or shipping or to buy a container immediately that'll arrive right away. But it's not, it's not a good situation. I mean, I've had Conversations with nearly every publisher where the first conversation, the first question I ask is, how are you and how is the business? How can we help, All right? Are you planning on communicating with your audience? Do you have enough to make ends meet? When is the game arriving? Are the deadlines going to be insane? And a lot of companies are doing okay, but they're uncomfortable. And a lot of companies are where El Dorado Games is where they're not sure, and they're pretty confident, that board games will just have to be a hobby for them. Something they love doing, but not their career. So, I think it's kind of apropos, because uh, they just posted how COVID almost shut us down, and how you can help. And like I said, I'll link their video, and you can see how you can help them, and support them, and their games are arriving. But... It's not just them. And I can promise you that. It's the whole industry. But if I look up Quackalope shipping, it was, where is my, well, I'm trying to find it here. It was in their studio. Why every Kickstarter will be late and might cost you more. I'll link my video down below as well. Only 10 months ago, in El Dorado Games studio, when I visited, I had this type of conversation with you. I can't believe it's only been 10 months. And in that video, I was talking about the shipping crisis, talking about the state of the world, talking about the impact that it's going to have on our industry. And sure enough, a $150,000 bill was not able to be swallowed by the company who I was supporting and visiting at the time. And that's heartbreaking for me. So what's the action items? I don't want to leave you on a downer. For new and indie publishers at the moment, really evaluate your numbers 
and ask yourself, what cost are you willing to pay to bring your game to market? Because now might not be the time. Now might be the time to bunker down and work with a firm to get more into the industry, to build your audience, to play test your game while things settle a little bit. For the audience, be gracious to the campaigns that you've already supported. A lot of them, Eldorado Games included, are caught up into this not because they could have seen the tide coming, but because the numbers showed up over the course of their production run. And they didn't have a margin wide enough to swallow $100,000, $150,000. Ask yourself, for those of you that run a business yourself, could you swallow that margin? Ask yourself, for those that work full-time to support your family, would a check or bill for, what, 20% of your yearly income, 20% of your household expenses, throw things a little out of whack? I mean, we just had $9,000 sewer expense downstairs. And we're figuring out how to balance that. I can only imagine having a surprise bill for 150 coming out of my direct business income. It would be, I mean, enough to shut us down, for one. And so be gracious. Be understanding. When publishers ask for more funds, for shipping, for help along the way, because a lot of them are going to have to, be ready, be charitable, and understand that a couple thousand people chipping in a couple dollars each can be a lifeline to publishers who won't exist otherwise. And then, as things get delayed, as games do and don't show up, and people behind the scenes struggle to make sure that you get the products that you've supported, please be thankful, be kind, be excited, be diligent at letting them know that you supported them because you believe in their product, because you believe in them. At the end of the day, no matter what people want to say or argue, this is a small community. This is a community of nerds and dorks and people who love the tabletop experience. And it's a luxury. So at a certain point, we have to help each other. We have to protect our own. We have to invest in our space. We are in the first wave of people falling in love with board games, and I hope that continues. I hope that expands, and it is in every conceivable way. But for the 5,000 people that backed that game that you wanted to support, the reality is it's not a lot of people. And the publishers count on you and relied on you during the Kickstarter, and they're going to continue relying on you afterwards to share their game, to promote their title, to highlight the people that you believe in. I mean... If I really wanted to challenge those of you watching, like right now, if you're watching this video, if you're here in this conversation, take a moment to identify some of your favorite publishers in the space. Some of the people that are creating designer board games that only a couple hundred or thousands of people have backed and let them know because all they ever get are complaints and criticism and nitpicks and viewers like me saying a game's a three out of five. They are going to need to hear from you. I guarantee it. And your messages will mean more than you would ever assume. And the state of our industry is a bit upside down. And then lastly, the third thing, the third challenge that I have, the third action item is for publishers that are doing okay. Please share your numbers. Not to get into brass tacks and details, but if you get a bill for a hundred extra thousand dollars with shipping... Communicate effectively with your audience and with the rest of the industry because more information about these topics helps everyone understand where we are. It lets us not be shocked by rolling delays. It lets us understand when $6 shipping seems expensive and every publisher keeps asking for it. It lets us comprehend why some games right now are printing on Kickstarter or a listing on Kickstarter with like $47 shipping. And it's because those numbers are just legitimately what they're getting. And they don't know if they're going to go up or not. And they're just trying to do their best. And if you've succeeded and you've been through this journey, I challenge you to let your backers understand a bit of the history. Tell them that you're in stable ground now. Let them know you got $500,000 in the bank now and it's for business expenses and it's to save your butt if things come up unexpected. But also let them know how you mortgaged your house, how 
you didn't make money on your first Kickstarter, how you worked for five years and paid yourself an equivalent of 15 grand or minimum wage that entire duration of your experience or your employee. Tell them about how printing models, you know, the first wave of creating that new exclusive Kickstarter unique model ended up costing you an arm and a leg. Tell them just how. Because more transparency, more communication, more support across the board is what our industry needs. So there you have it. It's the state of our industry. Just a conversation, an update. <sighs> I'm so bummed for Eldorado. And I'm so bummed for all the names of the publishers that I'm not willing to say. Because it's not my story to tell. Again, behind the scenes, there's a lot of them out there. So, Daniel, Eldorado Games, thank you for sharing. Thank you for continuing this conversation. Thank you for reminding us about our space and how vulnerable and also incredible it is. Thank you for being responsible with your funds to make sure that everyone is going to be able to get their games. Uh, yeah, and hopefully, hopefully this industry will treat you better as a passion project than it did as a career. And for those of you that are in debt, financing, making ends meet, keep going. Communicate well. Design some incredible games. And I hope that as our industry grows, you'll find some solid footing here. There's an incredible community. The only question is, is there profit?